Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to do our carnivorous plant update for February. So, in front of you are my temperate carnivorous plants, and they are very dormant this time of year. We had a cold night. We're under cover in this, so here's where my surroundings are. So, this is a great little area to keep my temperate carnivorous plants. They stay out of most of the weather, although there's a really cold wind today and most of the time the water in the trays is not frozen even if we have like a negative one degree night outside or that it doesn't get negative one in here but today things are a little bit frozen the water in the trays are frozen but um, that's okay so any carnivorous plants that are outside right now um, are pretty much cleaned up I've topped all of the pictures on the stuff that grows back pictures quickly stuff like the purpurea here and the darlingtonia I don't cut off the, all the pictures some temperate sundews in there venus flytraps are way at the back there but everything is still very very dormant here so we just want to make sure it doesn't get too cold for them right now it's um maybe negative two in here um, these are the cobra lilies that we just transplanted a couple videos ago they seem to be fine they're still very dormant you can see this um, clay pot here has actually cracked the um, other pieces in there, but um, so that I'll need transplanting this year. Um, but yeah, so not much is happening out here for these guys. They are going to stay out for another, well, stay out, they stay outside. So they're going to be dormant for another month or so before they start to poke um, up with new growth, depending on the weather. So. Why don't we move into the greenhouse and see what's going on in there. Okay, so into the greenhouse we go. It's, although cold outside, it's beautiful and sunny. So it's still um, early morning. Um, the one side of the greenhouse is getting sun. The front is not yet, but I've got a few plants pulled out for you. Um, I normally don't necessarily keep them just out in the open. They're all sort of tucked everywhere where they um, need to need to live but um, let's start on this side and just sort of do a carnivorous tour uh, clockwise so this is an Apenthe sanguiana it's got some nice um, basil shoots coming up here I think I can count three new growth tips on it so that's awesome they started last year this is a capensis it um, ended up living in there I did sort of a little experiment just to see if it would work and go figure a capensis was able to grow in there Another Nepenthes here. This one is a Ventricosa. It's got cute little upper pictures because it started its vining. So it vines all the way up to there now. So that's doing good. The pitcher production of course is slower for the winter. But it's also got a basal shooter too so it's starting to produce lower pitchers down there so that's great. Um. Hamada cross platykyla. When I got it, the um, growth tip was broken, so that's it there. It's growing another new leaf, but it looks like when this one broke, we lost the pitcher on the end, so it's still not going to be pitchering for a while. My only utricularia, it's doing okay. It's getting some four inch leaves on it now. It had a dieback last summer, and when I got it, it was really tiny, anyways. Drosera adelaide, it's all coming up into bloom. They're a cute little um, bloom. They have red flowers to them. This is a Drosera trachei. I brought it in. Um, it was outside. It was dormant. But um, last December, we got a cold, cold night. And I think it got a little bit too cold. This one needs to go dormant, but doesn't need extreme cold temperatures at all. So I, I think I erect a couple of the... Um, hibernacula buds there when they go dormant they, they form a hibernacula tight little cluster of um, little leaves so when I realized that it was getting frozen it was actually too late for everything except for this inside one the um, outside two hibernaculas here look like they got kind of 
frostbitten to death. I bet you they'll come back from the roots anyways, I'm not worried. And it's still got one, so that's good. And I can see on it the first little bits of dew are starting to go on some of the leaves now. So that one got pulled out of um, hibernation early. King sundews up here. They're doing great. Um, they're in bigger pots now. There's another pot of them. So there's three in each. I noticed um, they were all three in each one were actually in four inch pots like this before. And the roots were coming out the bottom. So I thought it's time to get them in bigger pots. I wanted to keep them growing. Here is a calm pot of Drosera Alice seeds. This is Oblanciolata. It's cute. It's got little pink flowers coming on it. Tiny little plant. Tiny little um, stems on it. I read it's not supposed to be that small, but it gets food and it's all blooming, so I guess that's some um, blooming size for it. This is a Capensis. Interesting story about this one. This thing, I was getting tired of it, so I left it out last fall and it got slightly frozen. Now this is not one that can take frost or freezing temperatures. It got slightly frozen, so I um, slightly, the whole top was dead. This was a, like a big bush up here. Um, and it had two plants in it. So I just cut it off and thought, oh well, I'll throw it in a greenhouse. And lo and behold, the tops that were, there was one plant here and one plant here. Now I have like four and five coming out where I cut it off. And I thought because I have so many capensis around, this guy here I wasn't too worried about at all. And this guy, he stayed out when it was that, we had the night it was like, I counted with wind chill. It was maybe like minus seven or eight, plus a wind chill we made it like minus 14. I know it's not as scary as um, most places this year, but uh, scary for us anyways, because we're not used to minus 14 at all with wind chills. So this guy got completely cooked outside. He was dead. Pot got seemingly frozen solid. This is a capensis as well. So I just trimmed off all the dead and I thought, well, it's dead, but I'm going to bring it in the greenhouse anyways and just sit it on the floor, see what happens. And look at all the new growth from my frozen capensis. They are a tough plant, a really tough plant. All right, we will swing you around this way. So this is more of the sunny side here. I supplement my plants with some light in the winter time, but as you can see, it's a bright um, window there anyways. It's got some bubble wrap on it, but the light transfers through it nicely. And so these guys, they get natural light as well as supplemental light. Top shelf there under the light is cephalotus seeds. Down here are Nepenthe seedlings. With stupid Nepenthes. My adult cephalotus usually sit in there, but I actually took some out and they're right beside me here to show you guys up close. That's where my cephalotus sit though. The helium fours are all in there. Uh, some miners, some newtons, uh, a few other ones in there. These are all like juvenile pitchers though. They're growing fast. They um they put on lots of pitchers since I've got them. So they're doing well there. The color of them is great, so I know that even for the winter time, between the just regular fluorescent bulbs, these are just cool white bulbs. There's two of them. Um between the bulbs and the natural light, they're getting plenty of sunshine or plenty of light because they're not um, a green color, they're a red color. A few more seedling nepenthes, intermus, platykyla. I brought out a row of plants here. So that is a low eye. There's two plants there. And they actually um, both threw off their first pitcher for me. When I got them, the pitchers died. And this is a slow growing plant. This one here, the low eye, has like a white lip to the, the top of it. And if I spin it around, this low eye has got uh, sort of a brownie red lip to the top of it. It's kind of interesting. I'm able to tell them apart that way. This is Macrophylla. It's doing well. It keeps picturing. They're a little picture still, although I'm hopeful for that one. A very um, robust growing plant. It's put on four or five leaves since I've got it. Every leaf has a picture that, that I've got. Hamadas are starting to picture up now. So I did a video on Hamadas a while back. I think, I don't even know which one it was now I did. I think it was this guy. So this one's got one and a half more pictures on it since I did it. I think I was excited about that first picture there. 
and look at the size difference between the first and the second picture on that and we're working on a third picture over there so that's good and there's another Nepenthes Hamada looking good with the, um, its first real picture there it's interesting because we have got this is clone one or clone A clone one it goes red so easily it takes so much less light this is clone two under the same conditions and look at there's no red in it I, I would really be able to up the light on this one I think and allow it to have much brighter light and this is unfortunately an unknown clone um, it was send me whatever clone you can and he sent me this one so lighting for this one seems to be somewhere in the middle of the other two it's got some red but not as much red as the um, clone one but the teeth on it are actually really close together in comparison to clone one and two now I went out of focus instead of into focus but I don't know if you'll be able to see it on camera there but those teeth are much further apart than those teeth so that's interesting uh, Berbichia cross Edwardsoni it's getting its first um, leaf that may picture it had a few leaves that looked like they were gonna picture but um, they were all leaves from before me and and they aren't moving at all there that picture started to grow and then I realized after that's a really old leaf anyways so this is my the first leaf with me so that's good this is a bongso it's growing really well got it as a, a extra large seedling we'll say last last year probably a cutting but it might have been a seed had a nice picture there had a nicer picture here you can see um, some of the Paris gnome starting and then look at this guy over here in comparison it's absolutely huge in comparison to the last one there and it hasn't even opened yet so very hopeful on that one now before we get into the rest of those I'll swing you up here those are all the butterworts they're all um, coming out in flower doing quite well I watered the tray once about a couple weeks ago and now I'm just gonna let it dry again there's a ping gigantica in the corner there not too gigantic yet but probably getting to be one of the biggest ones I have and I'll swing you back down I was hoping to keep this under um, 10 minutes but that's not gonna happen so this is a minor heterodoxa when I got this one it only had one adult picture to it and so this is new this one is new this one is new and it's growing away Chimatensis I'm sure I'm saying that wrong but I'm sure somebody will correct me it's getting some adult pictures when I got it it had no adult pictures on it so that's cool here is a close-up of Cephalotus so it grows under the lights over on the other um, side about four feet away from where we are now I just brought it out to show you some Cephalotus root and leaf pulling so this was a root and this one here was a leaf they seem to be quite growing quite well um, brought out these guys to show you there's a cephalotus seedling that's about six months old and then this guy here is a red form of cephalotus so you can see they're growing in identical um, locations side by side and you can see the difference between the red and the green form of them so that's awesome some Saracenia that I planted this time last year or stratified this time last year I didn't let them go dormant this year to get some extra growth out of them but they'll definitely have to go dormant next year but they're really starting to grow now again um, when I brought them in in the winter time these were like the biggest pictures on them so everything like this that you've seen is um, growing in the greenhouse over the winter so I think I made the right choice I definitely um, got many extra months growth out of them Citicina did the same thing with them and then these three here I just pulled out a stratification today so you can see that is some Saracenia seeds it's just a mix of seeds I collected um, from my plants and sowed them and then we have some rotundifolia that's a, a sundew the seeds are so tiny you won't be able to see them and that's a tracheae there or tracei but yeah um, these all had a four-week stratification 
all I did, I love these containers here, filled them up with a perlite peat mix. You can see the perlite down below. Then I did a fine layer of just peat moss to make sure I had good contact for seeds. Made sure it was appropriate wetness. Then I threw each container in the microwave and heated the soil up to 190 degrees Celsius. I used a meat thermometer to check that. They were ripping hot. That sterilized them. I let them naturally cool down. Then I sowed the seeds on them on the sterile media and put the lids on and threw them in the fridge for a month. So they just came out today. So hopefully in the next four weeks or so I will see some growth out of them and yeah we'll keep you updated on those as well. These guys hopefully by this time next year will be at least that size. But anyways guys that is a tour of my carnivorous plants. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you want to see more videos like this make sure you subscribe to my channel. And now I have the job of putting these guys all back where they belong. Anyways, thanks for watching.